Good afternoon. This is a mini lecture D in honor of Rosalind Franklin. And we'll talk about some of her work. Uh, last time we were talking about Linus Pauling and the electronegativity method, or the method of calculating electronegativity. Uh, here's a couple interesting pages from his lab notebook I want to show you. Look at this one. See that triangle up there? Two H's and an O. Yeah, he's trying to figure out the geometry using Pythagorean theorem uh, for the water molecule. 104.5 degrees. And just as a side note to you, his notation, he used uh, a capital A with a little circle over the top of it. That's uh, the symbol for the angstrom unit. And that's uh, the same as a tenth of a nanometer. So some physicists use angstroms uh, for atomic um, distance uh, measurements, and some use nanometers. doesn't matter which. Here's another cool page from October of 1932. Uh, protein waves, look at that at the top there, diffracted by gas molecules. Yeah, he was thinking about the de Broglie relation. There it is, right there. Lambda equals H over MV. Same as us guys. He wasn't doing too many fancy things here. Um, he was just doing some basic calculations there. Here's another page, uh, and this one is, is actually uh, pretty important for us today. I conclude that the hydrogen bonds are not located here in the diagram. He indicates it. Or I conclude that my assumption about the bond angle is an error. So he came to a conclusion. Either the, uh, the bonds are not located there or his assumption is no good about the bond angle. Therefore, in the next sentence, he says, I abandon my assumption about the pOH angle, the phosphorus-oxygen-hydrogen angle. And then he goes on to say, let us pack the PO4s, that is the phosphate ions, into that shape. And it's run off a page. Here's the full image of it. Uh, and you may say to yourself, Dr. B, what is he going on about? Well, look at the top of this page on one of the following pages. Look up there at the top. The helical arrangements of the phosphate PO4 tetrahedra. Yeah, he's talking about DNA. All those guys. Back in 1952, they were all trying to figure out the exact structure of the DNA molecule. Rosalind Franklin is the one that nabbed the, the structure. She bagged it. And her key tool was X-ray diffraction and X-ray crystallography. So let's do a little uh, mini-review on diffraction. If you send electromagnetic waves through vertical slits, this idealized diffraction grating, it's going to disperse the light into colors, just like sunlight is dispersed by a prism. Now, if, if you send the, um, the light produced by a pure helium source, you get spectral lines like this. You'll get some to the left, you'll get some to the right, depending on how you look through the diffraction grating. Uh, and depending on how good your optics are, you might get some more uh, spectral lines to the left or some more to the right, depending on how you adjust your optics and so forth. Okay, now that's if you have vertical openings, vertical slits. Here's another wrinkle that I want to show you uh, that is not vertical slits. It's a single circular aperture. Now, what happens when you send light waves through that? Well, when you send green light waves through it like this, uh, what you get is a system of circular rings. So you don't get bright um, bars to the left and to the right, equally spaced. And maybe an, a second set of green bars to the left and to the right, equally spaced. No, instead what you get are rings. Because you get left and right, but you also get diffraction high and low. You get diffraction at 45 left, 45 degrees right. In fact, all the way around the circle. And th that's what it makes. It makes circular rings. All right, so now that's a circular opening, very simple. What happens if you send light uh, not through vertical slits, not through a circular aperture, but through a crystal? This is what you get. A regular and systematic arrangements of dots, uh, arrangement of dots. And this um, structure, if you measure the angles and 
and you know draw a bunch of triangles, do a bunch of trig and stuff like that, you can figure out uh, the exact structure. You know, is it cubic? Is it hexagonal? Uh, is it uh, orthorhombic or some other structure? Yeah, you can figure that all out from looking at diffraction images like that. And you can do that for a whole lot of molecules if you're really careful about it. For instance, hemoglobin. Look at this image. X-ray diffraction for hemoglobin. This is the, the uh, molecule that carries oxygen in your blood. Here's another one, mannan, a polysaccharide from plants and seaweeds and stuff. If you, if you look uh, carefully at like chewing gum and stuff, sometimes you'll see it says mannitol, M-A-N-N-I-T-O-L. That's derived from this same uh, polysaccharide. Uh, that's a sugar alcohol, mannitol. Uh, anyways, here's another picture of mannan, X-ray image. Now, the one that we really want to focus on is this next one, the most famous X-ray image of all time, and that's photo 51. This is the X-ray diffraction image of the DNA molecule. Very tough to get, and in 1952, when this was made, um, it was a wonderful, uh, a wonderful result. And Rosalind Franklin is the one that did that. This is the one that definitely locks in the structure, not as a triple helix, not as a single helix, but a double helix, a double spiral. Um, and in fact, she wrote a, a paper for the journal Nature in 1953, and it was published simultaneously with uh, this, a similar paper uh, by Watson and Crick. Now, Watson and Crick are the guys that are credited with the discovery of the structure of DNA, but it was actually based on her image, and she was able to figure it out as well. And they published simultaneously. And soon after this, um, she moved to a different job. She wasn't, you know, they were not really treating her well at King's College in London. So she moved over to Birkbeck College, and she started working on the tobacco uh, mosaic virus. And it's kind of a sad story at this point because even though she deduced the double spiral in 1953 independently of Watson and Crick, she made that crucial photo, photo 51. She was not honored at the time. And uh, they, at the time, while she was still alive, they looked down on her. They, did, they treated her pretty shabbily. And she died young. She died of cancer at age 37 in 1958. So kind of a sad story about Rosalind Franklin. But she's the one that made the critical observation. Four years later, in 1962, Watson and Crick were given the Nobel Prize for the dis dis discovering the spiral structure of DNA. And... Rosalind Franklin was not, and the reason stated for that is that they do not give out the Nobel Prize to anyone after their death. It's not a posthumous award. It has to be somebody that's alive. Uh, but many people to this day feel that she should be honored in that way. And in fact, her, her department chair at Birkbeck College, John D. Burnell, he himself was a pioneer of x-ray crystallography. That's why he brought her in there, because he wanted the best. And that's what she brought to Birkbeck College. And he wrote this as an obituary to uh, Rosalind Franklin. As a scientist, Miss Franklin was distinguished by extreme clarity and perfection in everything she undertook. Her photographs are among the most beautiful x-ray photographs of any substance ever taken. Those are wonderful words to think about. And even though she suffered um, injustices in her day, uh, we can honor her now um, in this day. And in fact, that may remind you of somebody else. Have you seen that movie, Hidden Figures? Katherine Johnson, the key figure in that movie. Yeah, she was... 
um, the key figure in Hidden Figures, the key character, uh, and she and her co-workers at the NASA West Area Computers Unit eventually, um, oh, they they had an, actually had an even tougher time. I'm reading a book about Katherine Johnson right now. Uh, they had an even tougher time than uh, Rosalind Franklin, and uh, but still, we can honor Katherine Johnson in this our day. And we can honor Rosalind Franklin. And the lesson of it all to you is this. That those who ignore you and dishonor your work, they always mean the same thing. But in every age, they have a different plan for getting it. But we can still honor them. Katherine Johnson and all her co-workers, Rosalind Franklin and all the rest. <laughs>